Come on, don't we serve a faithful God? If you know he's been faithful and good to you, give him a little praise today. We serve a good God. I'm so grateful that God is faithful to me, even if I haven't been faithful to him. You may feel like, you may feel like me sometimes, where we're not also faithful to God, but his love is unconditional. And that means that there's nothing you can do to make him love you anymore. And there's nothing you can do to make him love you any less. And today he's giving you promises. He wants you to be free. He wants you to walk in his forgiveness and in his love. And I believe he's giving that to us today. He's so faithful to us, even when we're not faithful to him. How I many know that's, that's some real love right there? That's real love. So we serve a good and a faithful God. And I'm so glad that you decided to show up in church today. This is a great day to be in the house of God. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa right now, they, uh, they just got done ministering at a pastor summit with Pastor Vlad Savchuk, where Pastor Marco was invited to speak at a conference for pastors and for leaders. Don't we have a great pastor? Let's give it up for our amazing pastor who's pouring into leaders and pastors all over the world. Shout out to our pastor. My name is Christian. I'm the campus pastor here at Hallmark, and I get the honor of being able to serve you guys and, and bring the word today, and I don't treat this moment lightly, and I believe we're gonna learn today. But before we jump into the word, I got a, a few quick things I gotta share with you. We are getting ready to celebrate 20 years of ministry. 20 years of ministry, 20 years of lives being transformed. And so what we do every year, we have four amazing, incredible services. We do this every year, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and Sunday morning. This will be at the end of June. So we're giving you a lot of notice to mark your calendars, to save the dates. But these will be services. These services will be packed out. They're open to all. They are, uh, there's no charge at the door or anything like that. Come to service, come to receive, invite people as we celebrate 20 years of ministry. That's gonna be what we, we have the lineup here. Mike Signorelli. He's actually from New York, a powerful man of God. God has given him such a, a divine, uh, st divine wisdom for uh, the, this, this generation in this day and age. And we're actually going to learn uh, from Scripture today. And it's going to be incredible. Um, what, 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 this one thing I want to say about him. He is, he's been given so much divine authority. He, he's been known as, he's given the nickname of Demon Slayer. He he's has so much authority to cast out demons, to lay hands on the sick and see them be healed. And God is using him. He's coming from all the way from New York. He's a movie producer. He produced a movie. Incredible stuff happening. Then we also got, of course, our very own Pastor Marco Garcia. We all love our pastor. He's going to be speaking. We have our associate pastor, Pastor Robert Cuenca. He's going to be in the house. And then Pastor Vlad Savchuk. We all know Pastor Vlad. He's been... He actually came out last year, incredible man of God, over 1.3 million subscribers on YouTube, has a global influence all over the world, the founder of Hungry Gen Church. God is so using him to do incredible things, and they're going to be in the house for our 20-year celebration and anniversary. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be so good. So mark your calendars. You should have got one of these flyers. If not, get one on the way in. But along with that, we're doing something brand new something we've never done as a church before. We are gonna be hosting our very first church-wide conference. We are housing something called Growth Conference, our very first church conference. We've never done this before. Come on, get excited, church. Your church is gonna have a conference. We've heard of several, uh, there's a lot of big churches out there that have conferences, a lot of big churches and great conferences at that. But I think it's time and I think this is, this is the right time God is leading us and calling us to start our conferences as a church. And you get an opportunity to be part of the very first church conference that we're going to have as the Way World Outreach called Growth Conference. You get a chance to be a part of that. So just so that it's clear, this white flyer, these are exclusive, these are special keynote sessions with speakers, special workshops to help you grow in your organization, to help you grow in ministry, to help you develop as a leader, to build your success. And this is what this conference is all about. 
Now this conference is, is also, you can do both. You can come to our nightly services, but this is exclusive. There's tickets available for this. This is not open doors. This is not just anybody walks in. This is for those that are saying, I'm ready to go to the next level and I wanna invest in my growth at a whole nother level. And the reason why I think it's so important we do that is because not only are you growing for you, sometimes God is calling you to grow for somebody else. Your family, your business, your ministry, people around you. And so th there's gonna be opportunities for us to grow at the growth conference. We have early bird pricing right now, but what's so cool, we also have Dominic Russo. He is a global outreach and crusade expert, reaching millions of people, founded One Nation One Day, where they reach an entire country in, an, in one day. Dominic Russo is gonna be at the conference. We also have Hector Lamarck, who's a leading national sales director and success expert. We're talking about some of the best people at succeeding and growing and reaching millions of people and developing others. Come learn from these people. This is gonna be our very first conference. Of course, it's gonna include all the other speakers that we mentioned, but these, again, these are exclusive sessions that you get to be a part of. Tickets are available right now. You can scan that code, scan the flyer here. But again, we're anniversary services open to all, but at our growth conference, seating is limited, space is limited, tickets are limited. You get a chance to be a part of a podcast recording with one of them. Seating is very limited, but you get a chance to be a part of that. So check this out, get your early bird tickets right now. And that's it for my announcements. Who's ready for the word? Oh wait, one more announcement, I'm sorry. It's Cinco de Mayo, happy Cinco de Mayo. Our Spanish ministry is having an awesome Cinco de Mayo service. At 1.30, if you wanna be a part of it, a whole celebration, fiesta, they got, horses are gonna be here and all kind of stuff. If you see people walking around with the hat, it's cause they're getting ready for service. Viva Mexico, I don't know. I don't know what they say for. All right, let's do it, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that today is all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. We thank you that we've come here today ready to receive a word from you. We thank you, God, that you've come. You always come, Father, with a word for us. So, Lord, this is not just an average day. This is not an ordinary day where we check in and check out. But, God, this is a day we will grow. I pray that you would speak to our hearts. I pray, God, you would take all of my opinion, all of my own personal thoughts out of the way. Holy Spirit, I give you liberty to speak and move and use me as a vessel. We want to hear from you. We want the word today. Speak to us, Jesus. We thank you. In your name we pray, amen. Go ahead and take a seat, give your neighbor a high five. Tell them I'm excited to see you today. All right. Well, so glad that you're here with us today. You made it to the house of God. Give yourselves a round of applause. You made it to church today. Today we're beginning a brand new series, a series called Serving. Someone say Serving. We're gonna talk about serving and dive into what that looks like from scripture. The Bible actually makes it very clear on what serving is. And we're gonna find out from scripture what the Bible says about being a servant. But one thing I wanna start with, I wanna make sure we all understand, is that this topic of serving is not just intended for people that work at a church. The topic of serving, or this idea of getting involved in serving, it's not intended for people that you see right now helping you to your seat and, and working the cameras and up here at worship. It's not just intended for those people. But if you consider yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ, then there is no, there is no exclusion of serving. I cannot opt out of being a servant. Being a Christian and being a servant go hand in hand. So if I consider myself a Christian, that means I consider myself a servant. And I love what Gary said earlier. It's not, a, it's not about a matter of what you have, it's a matter of what you do with what God has given you. And today we're gonna learn that God has given each of us a very special and unique gift in order to serve people, to serve the church, and to serve others. Here's the problem. We become so conditioned, become so used to, being served that I've forgotten that I'm supposed to serve other people. We've made this about me, made it about ourselves. We've learned to 
do things for ourselves. We, we, we put us first. I put me above other people's needs. And when we do that, we begin to lose sight of what Jesus taught us about being a servant. Remember, if you're a Christian, you're also a servant. I cannot opt out of being a servant and being a Christian. It goes hand in hand. If I'm a Christ follower, I do what Jesus has done. And Jesus came to serve, not to be served. Are you guys with me? So we're going to learn about what it means to serve. We're going to learn about the gifts that the Bible talks about. We're going to learn about it from Scripture. So why don't we dive in? Why don't we jump right in? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. God has given you a gift. Someone say, God has given me. God has given each of us a gift. Some of us know exactly what that gift is, and some of us have no idea yet. But just know this, you can know this for sure, that God has given you a gift. And he's giving you this gift so that you can use it well, to serve other people, to love people. And I want you to understand this, that you do not have to try and qualify or perform or earn that from God. Because gifts are not earned. Gifts are given. You don't have to try and do anything to try and earn a gift from God. It doesn't work that way. If you earned it, then it would be your reward. You can receive rewards from God for using your gift. You can receive rewards. But the gift, these spiritual gifts that God is talking about, you can't earn them. They're just given to you. So that tells me that everybody in this room, young or old, whether church for 20 years or church for 20 minutes, it doesn't matter who you are, but God has set aside and designated specific gifts just for you to carry out. He's designed you, he's created you for this. And you may feel like, like you're not cut out for it. There's been times in my life where I feel like I'm not cut out for something. I remember anytime I do something new, I always feel like I'm not cut out for it. I remember the first time I ever preached. The first time I ever preached, I was 12 years old and it was to a little youth group at my last church. And I was 12, I remember, um, I never preached before, and, and I just, I, I, it was embarrassing. Let's put it that way. It was bad. It was really bad. No, I'm serious. It was like, it was really bad. It wasn't even cute. It was like cringe bad. <laughs> I remember, I remember the, literally the most word I said in that sermon, in those six minutes, was uh and um. Two words I used the most. So after that sermon, believe me, you probably, I, I probably thought, and you would probably think, this guy's not cut out for this. Definitely not cut out to preach. You might still think that, but it's okay. God's working on me. God's working on you too. <laughs> I remember every time I was in school and I went to the next level. We would go, you know, you graduate to the next level, go to the next grade. I'd always want to run back to my last grade. Because I'd feel like I'm not cut out for this next level. This new level is challenging, it's hard. But it's, it's almost the same thing when it comes to serving. See, when you step into serving, it's no longer about where you're comfortable and where you fit in and where things are cozy. God is gonna call you out of your comfort zone to show you what he's capable of doing in you. See, your capabilities grow, your capacity grows out of your comfort zone. I'll say that again, your capacity only grows outside of your comfort zone. If you're comfortable right now, then your capacity stays limited. I did not know that I would be able to preach later on in life. I did not know that I would be honored and privileged to be able to, to stand at this pulpit and be able to minister the word, which I consider a privilege and an honor, to be able to, to serve you guys and to deliver the message and to deliver the word. I did not know that would happen, but it only happened because I was willing to say yes to something that made me very uncomfortable. It wasn't comfortable for me to get up there. I was shaking, I was sweating, I was nervous. I invited my friends from school who were not saved. Three of them came and the entire time they were laughing at me in the back row. It's pretty messed up. Literally, that's all I could see was my friends laughing and I was like, uh, um, uh, it's bad. But here's the thing, God isn't looking for people 
that have all the gifts and are talented and are equipped to do it. God's not looking for you to have a degree. God's not looking for, for you to have the, the certificates and have the experience. Like nowadays, you need five years of experience at an entry-level job. How am I going to do five years of experience? I, I just started. But God's not looking for all of that. All he's looking for is a yes. God wants somebody to say yes. And here's the thing. God knows. He knows us better than we know us. So if you feel like you're not equipped, like you can't do it, why would God ask you to? If he didn't know that he was capable of working through you. Why would God call you to serve? Why would God call you to minister? Why would God call you to love others? Why would God call you to give? Why would God call you to encourage people? Why would he do this? He wouldn't have done it if he didn't know it was in you or God put that gift in you already. I'll tell you another story. I remember I was um, in college and at this time I was a part of the worship team but I only played guitar. That's all I did, that's all I wanted to do. I was not a singer, I had no vocal, like hidden, amazing talent. That wasn't me, I was not a singer, I wasn't singing all the time in church. But I remember being on the worship team, I just played guitar, but we started something brand new in the church. We started a young adult ministry called The Bridge Young Adults. We just started that out. Shout out to the young adults in here. So we started The Bridge Young Adults, and I remember being around the table, and Pastor Marco was a part of this launch, and he looked at, invited us to the, invited me to the table, and he said, Christian, are you ready to start to, launch, uh, to lead the worship team? <laughs> me, the guitar player? I don't sing. In my head, I'm thinking this. I'm like, I don't sing. I, I don't have what, I've never done this before. I don't think he realizes this. Is he sure about that? All of these thoughts and excuses started going through my mind. But what came out, it was just the Holy Spirit. I said, yes, I'm ready. And in my head, I'm thinking, what did I just do? <laughs> I went home that day, and I prayed. And I said, God, I'm going to do this. But if I'm going to do this, I'm going to need you to give me a voice by the time I get there. I'm going to need a voice. I don't want to embarrass myself. But I said yes. I said yes to something that was very challenging and uncomfortable for me. I didn't want the mic. I didn't want to sing. I was embarrassed. Here we go again. I was scared, I was nervous, and I was embarrassed, but I said yes. So our first service comes around. It was in November, November 2012, long time ago. We, we had our first service, and I remember, it was my first time leading worship. I was sweating like a dog. In the middle of November, it's cold. I was red as a tomato, and it was time to lead worship. You know, I was, it was so bad, I was hoping that nobody showed up. That's how, I was, that's how nervous I was. I was literally hoping no one showed up. I was thinking about me, and I was thinking about, you know, what, what, how I would appear and all this stuff. But I went through it, and I said yes. And that's all God needed. He just needed a yes. See, sometimes you think Sometimes you prevent yourself from stepping in, getting involved anywhere. And I'm not talking about you have to come up here and start singing in order for God to use you. Maybe you do, but maybe it's something else. Maybe God is calling you to do something else. Maybe God's calling you to serve somewhere else in this church. You can see people right now all over this campus that are serving. They're helping you. They're, 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 they're meeting your needs. There's people all throughout the week we're serving our community, bringing bags of groceries to, to, to doors, all, homes all over uh, the city. There's different ways that we serve. But you will prevent yourself from serving if you think you have to cross off all these boxes and check off all these things in order to start serving. But all you need to do is say, yes. all you need to do is say, yes. that's all God's looking for. So my question to you is this, do you have a yes written on your heart? If God says to you right now, I need you, I need you, I put a gift in you, I put something in you, and now I'm calling you and I'm commanding you and I'm giving you instruction to go do this, what's your answer going to be? Yes. yes. 
Or could it be, I've never done that before. I'm not qualified. Are, are you sure? I've never done, I'm uncomfortable. These are all the answers the enemy wants you to focus on. But what God is saying right here in 1 Peter 4.10, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. And this is what he wants us to do. Use them well to serve one another. Use them well to serve one another. That word spiritual gift, it actually, in the Greek, it comes from this word charisma, which means a gift given by the Holy Spirit that enable, enables us or equips us to serve God and the church effectively. I'll say it again. It was a long definition there, but it's a gift given by the Holy Spirit that enables or equips us to serve God and the church effectively. So God has actually placed inside of you a gift. This gift might be dormant right now. It's like, I know it sounds cheesy, but it's like a superpower that's waiting to wake up. It's literally that, a supernatural gift divinely given from the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that same power is living inside of you and has given you specifically a gift to be used to serve other people well. So he's equipped you with these gifts. He's given you a spiritual gift. And remember, gifts are given, they're not earned. Before you were born, God already knew what gift he wanted to give you. This gift was given to you, and the purpose of this gift is to serve God and serve other people. So what are the gifts? What do you mean gift? What does that mean? What, does the Bible talk about gifts? Yes. There's actually different places in Scripture that actually list some of the gifts that, that we operate in, that God has given us. I'm going to read one of those passages in Romans chapter 12, starting from verse 6 through 8. And by the way, these are great scriptures to write down. If you take notes, these are great scriptures to jot down. If you've never taken notes, these are still good scriptures to type up in your notepad and to keep for later. So you can go back to them and read them yourself. But this is what it says, Romans 12, 6 through 8. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy... Speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. There's two things in common we see from this scripture. First, the gift comes from God. And God has decided what gifts you have. God has determined that. The gift comes divinely appointed from God. That means no one could tell you. No one could say you're not gifted. No one could tell you you're good for nothing. No one could say you have no value. Nobody could tell you that you're worthless. No one could tell you that you have no meaning in this world. No one could tell you that because literally the creator of the stars and the sky and the mountains created you with value and with giftings and with talents and with things to be used to serve the world. He created you with gifts. So if you've ever looked at yourself and said you were worthless, just know that's a lie from the pit of hell. Because God did not create you without worth. He created you with value. He calls you his masterpiece, created for good works. Come on, he's given us an assignment. He's given us a duty and a call. Here's the truth. If we're a Christian, it's not walking in our calling. Then, then the question is really this, then what's the point? What are we doing? God did not create us to just take up room. He didn't create us to just consume. You know what the problem is nowadays? Well, how many, well, I'll just say this. How many have been to movie theaters recently? You've been to a movie theater. 
what, what are you watching? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Some people are like, I'm just, I'm joking. So we know, I remember back in the day, movie theaters were, there was like torturous kind of. Those seats were super uncomfortable. They were all stained up with Coke and, and Dr. Pepper. The floors are extra sticky. You literally cannot wear chanclas at a movie theater because your chancla will st stay on the floor. Popcorn everywhere. Um, you got the guy in the back recording, getting his bootlegs ready to sell. <laughs> I mean, I remember that. Movie theaters were a different experience. One little armrest, two people had to share it. You both have a soda, but like, who's gonna take the little cup holder thing? Now, movie theaters, like, they've mastered this. They're, you walk in, it's a whole restaurant dining experience. You could place your order and have it uh, given to you at your seat. Now you don't have to worry about rushing there and trying to maneuver to see if you can get some good seats and sit with your friend and ask people if they can move. You just reserve them. Seats are yours. Someone sitting in your seat, tell them to move. And those seats, talk about the seats. They're like lazy boy couches now. Comfy as can be. They recline. Some of them have heaters. They're all plush. They literally make it hard to stay awake in the movies. They're just so comfy and cozy. Movie theaters have trained us, and not just a movie theater, but a lot of areas, we've been trained and conditioned to be served. The question to you is this, are you treating church like a movie theater? Has the church become a place where you say, I don't like that movie. I don't like that preacher guy. Where's Pastor Marco at? That's cold-blooded if, if you said that today. That is cold-blooded. Come on, I'm just a young whippersnapper. I'm growing still. Or we say, that person, you don't gotta clap. Or you say, <laughs> you guys are awesome, love you guys. Or, or you say something like this, that person just took my spot. They know I sit there every week. <laughs> Tell them to move. That's my seat. Or we get hurt, we get offended, or, 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 or you know, we just don't like the lights today. We just don't like the vibe today. I don't like the song selection. I know the reality is our flesh speaks up sometimes and gives us all these things to critique. It's okay, I'm not guilting anybody. Our flesh speaks up sometimes and we lose sight of what we're actually here to do. You're not here, you're not here just to consume and watch a movie. You're here to learn how to join an army of servants. You learn how to be a part of a big mission. You learn how to be a part of a movement. God did not call you to be a movie watcher. God did not call you to sit in a lazy boy here at church. That's why we don't have lazy boys in the service here. That's why we have, that's why, see, this is a place where we gather the servants, where you're equipped to do a work and do some ministry. This is training grounds. This is class. Class is in session. I hope you're taking notes. This is a place so that you can grow, and you can grow in your walk, and you can get stronger so that you can learn to serve other people. You're not here to watch a movie. You're here to learn how to be a servant. That's why we're here. You know that the pastor, the Bible actually talks about what's the job of a pastor. The job of a pastor or a prophet or an apostle or an evangelist or a teacher. The job is literally just this, to equip you guys to do the work and to serve. We've turned it around. Now we've said, I'm only here so that the pastor can serve me. But here, here's the reality, that when we come into the church, yes, this is a hospital, and I'll start with that. This is a hospital for sick and dying people. And all of us have walked into this hospital sick, hurting, and dying, needing something, needing attention, needing an emergency room, needing the ICU. We've all come in needing that, including me. But, the, but it's different like other hospitals. See, other hospitals, when you go in, you go in sick, the doctor gives you some stuff, you leave healed, and you're better, hoping never to go back to the hospital. That's the way it works. 
But in this hospital, it's different. You go in sick, you get healed, and then you graduate to a nurse and a doctor, and you join the medical staff, and you now give attention to other people that are sick and hurting, and you join the club, you join the team. So how many people you came in here hurting and broken and lost? How many people came in here with some depression, knowing that you, you, you were dealing with something? How many people came in here knowing that you're de- you dealt with sin? You're dealing with sin, and you walk through these doors knowing, I need God in my life. Join the club. That's all of us. We all needed the doctor. But you're not supposed to stay sick. Get off the hospital bed. You're better now. You got to attend to somebody. You got to give blood to somebody. You got to give the IV to somebody. You got to help somebody else out. Make room for somebody else. Invite them. Snatch them out of the darkness. Bring them out of where you came from. You were lost. You were addicted. You were broken. You were bound. You were in the darkness. And God is saying it's your turn to go out there. Be the paramedic be the ambulance go snatch somebody out of darkness bring them to the hospital and serve them somebody say serve that's what we're called to do see when we make church a movie theater there's no life in it that's why you go on these little spurts you go to church for two three weeks in a row and you go on the streak and then you just you lose the, lose the fire. And you say, nah, I'm not going to make it today. It's raining. It rained a little bit in the middle of the night. Freeway's kind of wet. I'm not going to make it. I'm just kidding. If, you stay, if you're online, and uh, no shade, no shade. At least you're watching online. We love you. Um, you know that there's some people that want to be in this room that can't? You made it today. But it's, it's funny that we, 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 these little hindrances, these little things get in the way. And we treat this like a movie theater. We treat this like a consumer place. We treat this like a, a place where we just kind of come get our needs met. It's time for us to wake up, church. It's time for us to join the army. It's time for us to get involved. You're here to grow. You're here to learn. You're here to get equipped. You're here to serve others. How many know that's true? We're here to serve. That's what we're here to do. The Bible oh. Let's go, let's go back to 1 Peter 4.10. It says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Use them well to serve one another. When we don't use our gifts, we lose our fire. When we stop using what God has given us, we, stop, we burn out. I'm not even burn out, our flame goes out. See, the Bible says, fan into flames. Say it with me, fan into flames. Fan into into flames. Fan into flames, the spiritual gift that God has given you through the laying on the hands. What that means is this, you gotta keep your gift alive. And the moment you stop using your gift, your fire starts to die. That's why, like I said, you start losing passion in church. You go on these streaks, you go three weeks strong, and then you, you start ditching church, and you find reasons not to come. You know why? Because you, you didn't get involved. And you know what happens now? And I was just talking to Gary in the back, and he was saying, you know the problem is, is where, where we really get the hurt and pain is the transition. You go from, and it's true, when we come into church, we're supposed to be in a hospital bed. And it's, this place is to serve you, serve the sick, the hurting, the lost, and the broken. And if you're sick inside, this is the right place for you. But the moment you're healed, the moment you're healed, it's your turn now to attend to somebody. But that transition from being sick to now being the healer, from being the patient to the doctor, that's a tough transition because you go from constantly getting the attention, someone calling you, someone checking up on you, Someone greeting you with a smile, someone loving on you, and it's great and all, and that's awesome, but you depend on that and you become somebody that's totally dependent on the bottle. And what God is saying is this, it's time for you to now serve other people. The reason why you lost joy, the reason why you got offended that they stopped calling you is because you're supposed to be the caller now. You're supposed to be the one on the other side of the phone. You're supposed to be the one caring for the hurting and the lost. You're supposed to be the one knocking on the door. They stopped knocking on my door. It's because it's your turn to go knocking on someone's door. It's your time now. You are the servant. God is raising you up and equipping you to be the servant in the house. 
Don't lose your fire. The only way you lose your fire is you stop getting involved or you never get involved at all. Keep that fire alive, get involved. There's so many places for us to serve. This is a picture right here we have of Adopt-A-Block. They went out yesterday morning, a massive team of Adopt-A-Block. They went out here, and it's a brand new Adopt-A-Block team at Hallmark Campus. They go out every other week. They went out yesterday, knocked on some doors, and loved on some people. You could do that. If you love teenagers, we got a, a youth department here. This is a picture of our teenage, our youth department, caring and discipling teenagers. Maybe you had a rough teenage experience. Maybe it was rough for you. You made choices that you wish you never made, but we can't change the past, but we can change somebody else's future. So maybe it's your time to get involved and participate. You know, we also have an accredited university at our church called Leadership University. This is a leadership university team right here. There's teachers, there's admins, there's receptionists, there's all sorts of ways you can get involved. There's so many different teams, so many ways to get involved, so many places to plug in. You have the worship team up here, you have the, the media team back there, you have the guy on the camera right here on this camera right here. Zoom in for me really quick. Look at that boy, he's good at what he does. That boy's just serving. Wow, it's awesome. Can you go closer? Closer. I said closer, just kidding. But people on the camera, people on the media team, watch this. Look how good they are. Go back to 1 Peter 4.10. Boom. Go back to that picture now. Boom. 1 Peter 4.10. Boom. Someone's serving, someone's doing this. I know it's all funny, but, but uh, driving in today, there's people at the parking lot waving, saying hi. They're the first face you see. Shout out, parking team. There's people all over the place. You know there's administrative uh, uh, fields too? You're like, I don't really do that, I don't really do that, I don't really, I don't really like people. <laughs> but I do know how to work a computer. I do know how to file stuff. I'm a great organizer. We got ministries for you too. There's a place for everybody to get involved. But what God is saying is whatever gift you've been given, you are responsible for using it well. You're responsible for getting involved. You're responsible for joining the army. You're responsible for being a servant. If you're a follower of Christ, then we are responsible for serving. Someone say serve. serve. That word serve literally means this, to be a servant, to be an attendant, to serve, to wait upon, like a waiter is waiting at a table. Have you, have you ever had one of those just great servers? They're just amazing, amazing servers. How many servers we have in here actually? Shout out, oh no, yes, okay. Yeah. Shout out to our servers, that was awesome. You ever had a, had a table that was just, they just did such a great job, you're like, man, I really like this servant, they're just great waiter. You know, they made sure we had everything we needed. They comped, you know, your soda, just cause. And then you have some of those servants, I know it's none of you guys, that just, it make you want to leave a, a one-star review on Yelp. <laughs> they never saw your table. They never brought the ranch because, you know, you always want ranch with your fries. And they didn't refill your drink. And they, uh, they, all these different things, that they just didn't do it. It was like, where are they at? And you're wondering, oh, my goodness, where's, where's the attention here? So you go on Yelp, leave the one-star review. I know it's all fun and games, but here's a, here's a life check for us. The Bible says evaluate ourselves. I wonder if you looked in the mirror, how would you rate your service to God and to the church? What would be your spiritual Yelp review right now with the spiritual gifts that God has given you? I know that's like an eye opener for a lot of us, but it's the reality. And the Bible says very clearly, it says going back to 1 Peter 4.10, it says use them well to serve one another. So the Bible literally is showing here that I am able to use it well or I'm able to use it poorly. I'm able to use the gift well or I'm able to use it poorly. How do I use a gift well? This is how. Three ways we use the gift very well. We use it to serve others. And I mentioned this already, but we make it about other people, not ourselves. I don't use my gift for attention. 
I don't use my gift for applause. I don't use my gift so that I can get recognition. I use my gift for the best interest of other people. That's why I use my gift. I use it, I think about others. The Bible says in Galatians 5.13, for you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Don't use what God has given you for your own sinful nature, for your pride, for your ego, for your own gain. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. The way you use your gift well is you make it about other people, not you. That means you sacrifice, we sacrifice our own comfort. We sacrifice our, our own time. We sacrifice our own things, our own well-doing. There's people that come to two services on a Sunday. And, and I'm not saying that to like, it's, you know, be down on anybody. But here's the culture that we should have. Come to receive one and come to serve one. Come to a service that you receive, you worship, you receive the word, you take notes, you get everything, and, and, and God pours into you. Yes, come for that. But maybe throughout the week or throughout the month, at least once a month, make, an op, make it a, a point that you come to one service in addition so that you can serve somebody else, so that you can be the person in the parking lot, so that you can be the person that's greeting at the door, so that you can be the person that's loving on people. Make it a point to do it but to serve others. Let me see, let me do a test really quick. Let me see your smiles really quick. Let me see if you got a nice smile. Look at those smiles. Those pearly whites. You got nice teeth. I don't know if anyone's told you that. You got nice teeth. You would be great for our greeting team. Greeting at the door, all those pretty smiles up there. Just imagine, and you know what's crazy? Some of us, and I'll get into this, but some of us think that when there's a, a, a hole, that we gotta complain to somebody. But maybe God is showing you a gap so that you can fill the need. Well, there, was, there used to be greeters at this door. What happened to those greeters? Oh, I'm going my day. And God is saying, the reason I showed you that is so that you can meet the need. See, what happened? We were so on fire, so ready to serve, and then we turned it all around and made it about me. When I use my gifts well, I use it to serve others. Let me see your smiles again one more time. That's good. For those of you that just mean mugged me, we have a security team. <laughs> You'd be perfect. You got a scary me mug. That was scary. I'm just kidding. Our security team, they're still loving. So you, if you're going to join, you got to smile. <laughs> but, the, but the idea is this. There's a place for everybody. There's always somewhere for us to serve. Another way we use our gift well is we look for opportunities to meet needs. We look for opportunities. We don't ignore the opportunities. See, anytime you see something that's off, anytime you see a lack in a person, anytime you see somewhere, something, or maybe trash on the floor, or, 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 or maybe our parking team wasn't as full as it used to be, or, or, or maybe you see that, um, that there's need here, there's need there, there's, this isn't working, this didn't go right. Maybe it's because God highlighted it to you so that you can meet the need. You know, if you walk out of here today and you see trash on the floor, that's an opportunity. Trash in the foyer, we see that. Here's my opportunity to serve. I'm going to pick that up. So what we did, we went ahead and put trash all over the church. <laughs> We're going to test all of you guys. We got cameras everywhere. I'm just kidding. Look for opportunities to jump in and help. And one last way that we use our gifts well is that we make it active. Don't put your gift on a shelf, but put it to work. I pray that today those spiritual gifts come alive in the name of Jesus. I just, I just speak this out and I declare that whatever spiritual gifts that God has given you, that he will reveal them to you and they would come alive in Jesus' name. I think it's time that the rubber meets the road. What good is this sermon, hearing all of this, if I do nothing with it? The only way the church grows, the only way we see our families and more loved ones saved and in church receiving Jesus is if we get involved. How are we gonna take care of the hundreds and thousands of souls that are gonna be here? How are we gonna take care of the, the dying and the hurting and the spiritually broken? How are we gonna take care of the spiritually sick if we don't get involved? 
It's time for us to get involved. So no one leave, no one leave, no one leave. Stay seated. I'm going to put this code up behind me. We're going to make two calls today. The first is this. If you're ready to say yes to God, maybe you've been, maybe you have served before, maybe you've never served before, and it's kind of, it's kind of scary. You know, the Bible says there's one command that shows up more often in the Bible than any other command. You want to know what that is? Do not be afraid. God is saying there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to fear. God is ready to connect you and, and use you and use your gift. So this is what I want you to do. I see people shuffling. Grab your phone right now. I want you to scan this code. If you're saying, I'm ready to say yes, I'm ready to even just get plugged in. What we're going to do, we're, gonna, we're committing to connecting you to a place that you can serve well. And you may feel like you're not equipped, like you got nothing to offer. I can't sing. I can't preach. I, I, don't, I can't really smile that well. Um, what can I offer? Trust me. It's not up to us. It's up to the Lord. And he sees that you have a gift. And he's giving you a gift. And he says you're worthy. Use it to serve. Use it to build. Use it to love others. Let me give a few more seconds, a few more moments. As I'm talking, pull your phone out. Scan this. It's the only time I'm going to tell you to pull your phone out and start taking pictures in church. But... Scan this code behind me. This is a moment for us right now to jump in. By show of hands, how many are already serving somewhere? You're serving in a ministry somewhere. Look at all those hands going up. Look at all those hands. That is awesome. That is awesome. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? And I don't want anyone here to feel condemned to serve. There's no obligation that we're twisting your hand to do it. It's not like that. And I love what Gary said earlier, we get to serve. You know, I'd much rather be the, the, the nurse or the doctor attending to somebody that's sick than be dying on the hospital bed for the rest of my life. I'd much rather be the one to give. This is why the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. If you've never served before, get ready. It's going to be one of the greatest experiences you ever have. And you're going to grow more than you ever have. And you're wondering what your next level is? It's this here. Get involved. Serve. Volunteer. We're going to contact you. We're going to connect you. Amen. How many are excited to serve? How many are ready to get involved? How many received that word today? I'm going to make one more call before we leave here. Just a few more moments. This next call I'm going to give is for those that are in this room, maybe you're, you, you're not a Christian and you were invited today, or maybe you're coming back to church in a long from a long time, and I just want, this is another call, very important. You know that the reality is that we do not know if we will have tomorrow. I know that sounds kind of morbid and dark, but it's the truth. None of us have tomorrow promised. That means that and we've seen this over and over again. We've seen people come to church faithfully years. We've seen people come to church for the first time. And there's been times where those people leave and they don't make it back to the next Sunday because they went on into eternity. They died. We all have an appointed time, all of us, including me. We're going to pass away one day. This is why it's so important to talk about this. Where will you go after you die? Where you go after you die is determined based on one thing. It's determined based on what Jesus has done and whether you've given your life to him or not. The Bible says, and because here's the thing, you can't get to heaven by being a good person. Because the Bible says the wages or the price of sin is death. Have you sinned before? Has this guy sinned before? Yes. We've all sinned. And because of our sin, we're separated from God for eternity. We experience death here on earth, and we, start, and we experience death for eternity after we die. It's full eternal separation from God after we die. When we die in our sin, what does that mean? We go to hell. Hell was never designed for you, was not intended for you to go to. But when I willingly reject God because of my sin, that's where I end up. And I can't try and be a better person. I can't try to heal my own sin and disease. I, it's a problem. It's a disease we have. And we must go to the healer. And the healer, his name is Jesus. He's the only one. It's not your good deeds. It's not membership to a church. 
It's nothing else. It's giving your life to Jesus. That's the only way to be saved. How can I be saved by giving my life to Jesus? Well, here's why. Because while you were still a sinner, Christ came and died for you on a cross, which means he paid the price of death that you should have paid. He did it for you because he loves you and he has a plan for you and he has gifts for you. He has purpose for you. This is what God has done for you and me. So he's given us, he's given us an opportunity right now to be forgiven, to be set free, to have eternal life. You may be thinking, I'm too dark for that. It, do, it doesn't matter how far or how dark you, li- you think your life is. God loves you and he wants to forgive you and he wants to give you eternal life right now in this moment. How can I be saved? Put your faith in Jesus. Repent from your old ways, which, mean, which means this, turn away from the old way you've been living and give your life to God today and you can be forgiven, healed, and set free and have a brand new beginning so that when you die, you don't go to hell, you go to heaven forever because of what Jesus has done for you. How many are thankful that God has given us this today? So I'm gonna ask you this. If today you wanna give your life to Jesus, if today you wanna be forgiven of your sin, if today you want to know if you were to die, that you would end up in heaven for all of eternity, not because you're a good person, but because Jesus is, is the Lord of your life and he's washed you with his blood and he's given you a new start. If you're ready to put your faith in Jesus today, then when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand and say, that's me. One, two, three. Just raise your hands all over this room. I see you guys. I'm proud of you. I see you, I'm proud of you. I see you guys back there waving, I'm proud of you. I see you guys, I see you, I see you right here. I see you guys right here. I see you all in the back right here. I see you guys, I see you to my left. Anybody else, you're saying that's me. I see you over here. Anybody else, I see you guys back there. I see you. Come on, let's give a hand for those that raised their hand. Let's all stand to our feet. I'm gonna ask one more thing. If you raise your hand today, do me one more bold favor. Can you come to the front? We want to invite you, Um, we want to pray with you, we want to congratulate you, and we want to help you take your next step. So join us at the front right now. If you made, if you raise your hand, and come on church, this is where we clap, this is where we get excited, this is where we give them a round of applause. They're making a decision right now to follow Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Come on, let's give it up for all those that raise their hand. Come on to the front, come to the front right now. Yes. It's a big moment. It's so awesome. God is good. They're still coming forward. Let's give them a hand. So if you came forward, we're going to close in prayer right now. Just hang with me. If you came forward, what we're going to do, we want to help you take your next step. If you came forward right now, we're going to walk with you. We're going to help disciple you. We're gonna, we're gonna show you what next step to take. And so what we're gonna do, the person in front of you, they're gonna sign you up for a class called Starting at the Way. We're gonna help you get baptized and surrender your life to Jesus and never turn back. It's gonna be the greatest, this is the greatest decision you will ever make. How many are so proud of everyone that came forward? Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, thank you for going to the cross on my behalf. You took all of my sin upon you and you gave me forgiveness and a new life. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose from the dead so that I can be saved. From this moment forward, I will live to serve you. Jesus, you came to serve me Now I live to serve you. Fill me with your spirit. Make me a new creation. And I'll never be the same again. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me, for saving me, and for setting me free. In Jesus' name I pray. We all say amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Church, we love you. Don't forget, Growth Conference. Get your tickets. It's early bird pricing right now. Early bird pricing will expire and prices will go up. Be a part of the very first growth conference we've ever done as a church. Also, ladies, don't miss women's conference. It's coming up. We got 12 days away. There are a few tickets left. You can be a part of that as well. 
We love you so much. God bless you. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. If you need prayer, come forward. We'd love to pray with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday.